G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, something that I think will really help a lot of you new pilots out there or people who want to get into drone racing, one of the most important decisions that you can make is what sort of radio do you get because there's so many different types on the market and uh, basically what this is, this is in my opinion the best drone radios for 2017. So if you're just getting into the hobby or you want to know sort of what are some good popular options out there, we're going to stick a whole bunch of the radios on the bench. I'll give you all the facts, break it down, sort of how they work, what I like, what I don't like, and also their prices, so you guys can make an informed decision to get the right radio for you, because it's really important that you get the right radio. It's such a personal thing, there's a whole bunch of different features they can offer, and it's just something you wanna get right straight up. So we're gonna stick them on the bench, we'll probably start at the, we'll do a bit of an overview, then we'll start at the cheapest, work our way up to what I think is probably the best, the most I would wanna spend on a radio, and then, uh, yeah, give you guys the information to make the right decision. Anyway, enough rambling from me, let's stick them on the bench, have a bit of a look of uh, what actual radios we have and get started. Alrighty, so here they all are on the bench and they don't really fit in shots, so I'm just going to have to flash some pictures on the screen, but we're going to go through, we're going to go up from cheapest all the way up to the most expensive and the ones that I could recommend, the six most popular radios out there. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the Flysky FSI6, then we're going to go up and look at the FSI6S, we're going to have a look at the Turnigy Evolution, which is my personal favourite, then we're going to move in and look at some of the free, some of the Tyrannuses, so we've got the Freesky Tyrannus QX7, then we've got the uh, the normal Tyrannus X9 Plus, or whatever it is, we've got the Plus, and then we've also got the Special Edition, which I think a lot of people are going to be interested in. Now what this is, this is aimed at, look, I'm going to put my opinions in there, but also giving you the facts that you can make your own decision on what radio is right for you so we'll go through the features of them all and then sort of sum them up towards the end but let's jump in and look at the cheapest one first let's look at the fsi6 Alrighty, now uh, look, there are a ton of radios out there, but I'm picking the most popular ones in the hobby. So one of the ones that I think a lot of people get, and it's for the price, and everything I talk about is linked down below, but is this one, the Flysky i6. Now this is a super cheap radio. I think it's coming in at like 40 bucks or 50 bucks with a receiver. And uh, in my opinion, I've seen a lot of people fly with this, and I'm happy to recommend this if you're absolutely skint on money and you don't have too much to spend. But you know, you can do a lot better with just a little bit extra cash. So some of the main features of this one, number one, it's super cheap. Uh, it's got a nice bright display. It runs iBus, which is a great protocol for connecting up to your drone. And you don't really need too many channels. So there are some mods, you can, some hacks you can do online. You can have up to 10 channels with one of these bad boys. But it doesn't, you don't really have too much here that you need. So it doesn't do any audible warnings or anything like that. It doesn't really talk to you. It does do some little beeps here and there, and it does have some trims, but you know, you've got your two sticks for controlling your radio. And for a drone racing, look, you're going to have an arm switch. You might want to have a mode switch or something else. And then you've sort of got two spares. So I don't know how much extra you really need. And if you absolutely were desperate for cash, I'd be very happy to uh, recommend something like this to people. Now, one thing to be mindful of with this version, it doesn't have a USB. So you've got this little port at the back. And look, if you want to hook this up to your computer and practice on the computer or something like that on a simulator, this isn't going to be your easiest option. So uh, look... In my opinion, the sticks too, when you're flying around with this cheap radio, you actually can tell the difference. They don't feel quite as nice, feels a little bit more sloppy, but in saying that, it is still far, far more controlled than any of the toy radios or anything like that. But I guess you sort of get what you pay for. But look, it is an option out there if you're absolutely broke, and I have recommended these a lot in the past. I even have a pilot, a guy I fly with called Jono. He, uh, he has the option. I've said, mate, do you want to just use one of my Tyrannuses? And he's like, no, or Tyranni, whatever you want to call it. He's very happy with his radio, so he doesn't want to switch anytime soon. So look, definitely not a bad radio, but on the cheaper side of things, and uh, pretty, much as, pretty much about as cheap as you can actually get into the hobby with a decent radio. But it still does everything you need it to do. Alrighty, let's move along a little bit, and uh, this is what I'd actually recommend. This is the one you can get for just a little bit more. So this is the i6 uh, from the same brand, Flysky. So this is the i6, uh, F, F, I, i6S, I I should say. Now, uh, just like its little brother, you still do need to put your own batteries in the back here, so it takes some things, but a big difference with this one is, when you turn it on, this one doesn't have any batteries in there, but this one is all touchscreen, so it can make navigating the menu and everything like that much, much easier. Alrighty, so I put some batteries in, and you can see, having a menu like this is definitely a lot easier when you're setting things up, whether you want to set up your channels, or you want to go through and you want to do your trims, or change your endpoints, or reverse some things. Everything in here, even setting up your fail safes, is very, very easy to go through and do this. Now, 
I'm a big fan of this radio, and I think if you have the choice between these two, this one is not too much more expensive. I can't remember exactly what it is. It's going to be linked down below, but if the, ch the difference between these two, the range is about the same. They had the same amount of channels, but the ease of use to plug this one in and set a, get it up, get set, and get flying is going to be very, very easy with this one. And it also has a little USB. So that is my biggest complaint with this one. If you do want to upgrade and sort of get your hands on something that you can use in the field and also plug into the computer, you can't go wrong with one of these. And if you're a pincher where you fly around holding the sticks like this, a radio like this is going to be pretty comfortable when you're using the neck strap. So look, I'm a pretty big fan and I definitely recommend if you can afford the upgrade between these two, this one is, in my opinion, a much more user-friendly radio. They pretty much, they're going to give you the exact same performance, but in terms of things you might want to use, like a USB function and sort of the ease of use, this one is uh, a lot better. Alrighty, let's move on and look at one that's almost similar, uses the same sort of protocol but from a different brand and a total redesign on how you hold your controller. So this bad boy right here, and this is all moving up in price, so this one's a little bit more expensive. I'll link this one down below. This one I think you can only get it from Hobby King or eBay, and this is my personal favourite. Now this is the Turnergy Evolution. I fly with this one all the time, and look, it does not, it doesn't even have as many features as this bad boy right here. But in my opinion, I love this one for one very simple reason. I can simply hold it like a game controller. Everything's right there. It fits very well in my hand. So that's, look, it's pretty much the same as the other one. You do have some LEDs, but honestly, you're never gonna see them when you're flying around drone racing. You've got the touch screen at the top, which you can use exactly like the same with the IF6S. But uh, yeah, just the Turnergy Evolution. And you have one big button in the middle right there you can use for some timers and those sorts of things. But it's just, and, and some simple switches. You don't really need too much more. And I know a lot of people give some criticism to this radio. It doesn't give you any audible callouts or anything like that. You've really only got a few simple switches. You've got one in the middle and two on the back, but that's all you need for drone racing. Let's say you're flying around, you need one for your arm switch, one if you use some acro modes or level modes or something like that. And then finally, you need a buzzer. I really don't think in today's world when you're flying around with OSDs and that sort of stuff, you don't really need any more features. So look, this is my personal favorite to use, but it's probably not the one that I would recommend for most people. For me, it's all about the feels and because I fly with my thumbs. If you're gonna pinch this, it would be a lot more uncomfortable trying to fly with one of these. But yeah, for me, it's all about those feels and probably the years of playing Xbox. I feel right at home flying around with this one. Alrighty, now moving up the line, right here, this obnoxious pink colour. Look, this is the Tyrannus QX7. I'll drop some links below anyway because it does come in a whole range of colours. You don't have to get this bright pink one, bright purple one. I got it for a bit of fun, but this is the Tyrannus QX7 and this is made by FreeSky, who in my opinion, FreeSky have the best radio link to your drone as well as running OpenTX, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So the best radio link... I think if you're going to go for some long ranges or flying in some sketchy places or you really wanted to go for maximum distance, this is the brand of radio that's going to give you the, you know, that you can actually go the furthest. So I really like FreeSky for that reason. And I know a lot of people fly FreeSky. It's probably the most common radio out there, the Tyrannus, you know, the Tyrannus systems. Uh, and they do a whole bunch of things. So if you want to get into just a little bit more than drones, these things are great for planes. They've got tons of sort of software things you can do. And that brings me probably to the most important part. Look, they don't have a touch screen but they do have what's called OpenTX. Now, OpenTX, and you know, this thing, it gives you like audible warnings, it can talk to you, it can tell you how many volts your battery's got, everything you sort of need when you've got your goggles down. And it's almost, it is a mini computer in here. I've seen people playing Snake on this thing. They've set up a whole bunch of different sort of really fancy pantsy scripts. It can do a whole bunch of stuff. So if you're into programming or you want to do some special things with your drones, this is definitely a very, very powerful radio. Probably one of the most powerful radios there are. Anything that can run Open OpenTX is a really, really good system. Now, this is the cheap version because uh, I think this was directly made to combat something like this. But for me, it, it look, it does feel still fantastic in your hands. It's got some nice big grips on the back. And a big part I want to mention, this module... This is a JR module, so anything you put in here, all those other radios we talk about, they don't have spaces for your JR module. And that means if you want it, say we wanted FreeSky to talk to a different brand of receiver, you can pop that in the back, you can pop a different module in there, and it's ready to rock and roll. So that's a really powerful feature as well. In terms of drones, look, if you're only going to get one, this is probably my one that I would recommend. I think it's, it's priced, the performance ratio is off the charts. It offers the most features, almost the same features as the more expensive ones we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, and it's also got the strongest radio link. The only thing I don't like 
is probably it doesn't fit my hands as well as this but that's just personal opinion if you're a pincher and if you actually fly like this i would say hands down this is the best radio that you can get now moving on speaking of the Tyrannus, let's have a look at its sort of older brother right here this one's a little bit more expensive and uh this is the Tyrannus plus and to be honest I think this one's a little bit obsolete. It does exactly the same stuff as the QX7, except it costs a little bit more. It has does have some extra switches, and it's got these sort of sliders on the side, but for drone racing, are you really going to use those? It does still use... I don't think this one's got a battery in it. It does still use OpenTX. It does all that other stuff. It's still got the JR module in the back, so if you want to do some stuff right there, everything else is exactly the same. And to be honest, this was the first radio I ever bought. I, you can see how dirty this one is. I've put so many batteries through it. And it still performs really, really well. I hardly ever had fail safes using this bad boy. And uh, this was a fantastic radio, and I'm so happy that I got it. It lasted me so well, but it just doesn't do the same. You know, for the price point, something like this does this. And this one's even a little bit lighter. So, uh, oh, and something I should also mention too, this one's battery module. You can either put your own special battery in there, or it also comes with some parts where you can put some, like, little AA batteries in there. You get a nice little adapter. So, look, overall... In terms of getting the Tyrannus Plus, if you're going to fly some planes or you've desperately needed these switches, I would say get this radio. But otherwise, I would say stick with the QX7 if you want something like that. Unless, this is where we throw a bit of a spinner in the works, we're going to look at our final radio, the Tyrannus Plus Special Edition. So this is the Special Edition right here, and you can see things look very differently. For starters, there's a whole bunch of different colour schemes. So if you care about blinging your radio, have a look down below in the links. There's a whole bunch of different types that you can get. Now, this one is almost exactly the same as the original Tyrannus, but there was one thing that people started to do. Now, with this Tyrannus, people felt like the gimbals felt a little bit cheap, and they were doing some antenna mods because they wanted to put a different antenna on. When you get the Tyrannus Plus, the guys over at Free Sky have actually done that. So, uh, this is probably the most... This is the most expensive one we got. I can't remember how much it is. There'll be a link down below in the description. Look, it's still not too much. It's still awesome value. Like all these radios are really good price points, actually. But you've got the antenna mod. So if you want to put a higher, more powerful antenna on there, all the work's already done. You've just got to screw it on and change your antenna. And then the only other real difference right here is if you've got some of these special gimbals. Now, these gimbals, these are the Hall Sensor gimbals, and they are meant to feel a lot more. But so many people out there say that these are a stiffer, a more like it's a more weighty radio. It feels fantastic in your hands. And, uh, you know, you can see you've got little upgrades like these little parts sticks to your thumbs a lot better, or, if, you know, if you're going to pinch. But the biggest part of these upgrades, it's almost exactly the same as the other radio, except for the antenna mod and these gimbals. And a lot of people out there were going and they were modding their gimbals and putting their own ones in. Now this one here, this is the most expensive radio. I do think it offers the most features. It's got the best gimbals, things like antenna mod, it rocks open TX, you've got your JR module, everything we've spoken about. And uh, the crazy part is, look, if it's not too expensive in this hobby. Like this one is like, I think two, I'll link it down below, but between two and three hundred dollars. And look, you can get definitely some cheaper options. Ones like this are still fantastic. But uh, if you want something that's really going to last a long time, and has some of the best quality gimbals that you can use. I don't think you can go past the special edition. Alrighty, so there it is. There's a lot of information that you guys might need when you're looking at sort of a drone buyer's guide, a drone radio buyer's guide, I should say. And look, I know I didn't cover Futaba or Spectrum, but in my experiences, the amount of pilots that fly them is so much less. These are much more common options out there. I've never actually seen someone flying with Futaba or Spectrum for that matter. I think the only pilot I know that flies Spectrum at the moment that I can sort of talk about would probably say Nurk FPV, and also uh, Ladrib, I think they fly Spectrum. But other than that, I'd say most people fly the, Tyr the Tyranna systems, the Free Sky. A lot of people fly the Turnergy Evolution. That seems to be the most popular at my club. And some people out there just love the good old cheap FS i6, so the Fly Sky ones. So look, overall, that's all the information that I wanted to give to you guys. So hopefully you can make an informed decision on what's going to be the right drone radio guide for you. Because I know there's a lot of stuff out there. Alrighty, so there it is. There's my drone radio buyer's guide for 2017. And uh, I know the big question, a lot of people in the comments, a lot of people who watch the show are going to know, Stuart, why are you saying the Tyrannus QX7 is the, you know, your top pick of radio of something people should get when you fly with the Turnergy Evolution. And look, this is a cheaper radio. It doesn't offer nearly as many features as this one. But uh, for me, the reason that I fly this, and I think, look, it's an inferior radio to this one, is just how this one feels in my hand. I guess, look, I've spent a lot of time playing Xbox and all that sort of stuff. This one, in my opinion, just feels right for me. But if I was going to get into the hobby, 
in. I'd never really had any experiences with radios or anything like that. I think the QX7 is going to serve a lot of people very, very well. Now, drop it down below in the comments. You know, what radios do you like? I know I didn't cover Futaba or Spectrum, but in my opinion, they are far less common than these main ones we've had here today. And this was just all about giving you guys some information. If you're getting into the hobby, what is going to be the right radio for you? So if you've got some ideas, definitely drop them down in the comments below. Uh, and I want to know too, if you had to pick, give me a thumbs up if, you, uh, if you'd if you pick the QX7 over this one. Alrighty, so I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Definitely subscribe for more FPV related content. Everything's linked down below anyway. And as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.